Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, this is an Easter morning like no other we have ever experienced. Who could have dreamed that on Easter Day, we would not all be together at Trinity, trumpets sounding, alleluias ringing, choir thrilling us with its music, and the sounds of Hail the Festival Day shaking the rafters. Instead, we are together, but in our homes, physically isolated from one another, but together in our longing for the joys of fellowship with one another and in the hope of new life that Easter proclaims. On Good Friday, uh, as we walked the way of the cross with Jesus through a grove of trees, we reflected on the cruel irony that something as beautiful and alive as a tree could be taken and turned by the powers of this world into an instrument of torture and death, the cross on which Jesus was crucified. Today, we celebrate another great irony, and that is that an instrument of cruel inhumanity and torture and death could be transformed into a sign of redemptive love that overcomes even death itself. God in Jesus pulled the curtain on the false powers of this world and revealed that only one thing finally has the power to overcome death, and that is the power of love. Love so deep, so broad, so high, as a favorite hymn puts it. O oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high, how passing thought and fantasy that God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortals' sake. For us he rose from death again, for us he went on high to reign, for us he sent his Spirit here, to guide, to strengthen, and to cheer. <clears throat> in, Math <clears throat> in Matthew's account of the resurrection, we see Mary Magdalene and the other Mary going to the tomb on that first Easter morning where they expect to find Jesus' body. An angel appeared to them and said, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. A couple of weeks ago, after it became clear that we would not be back in our church building by Easter, I posted an article to our parish Facebook page that some of you might have seen. It was titled, You Don't, <clears throat> you don't Need to Open the Church by Easter. Now, this is especially disappointing to us at Trinity because our church building is a particularly beautiful one, and it does something to us just to walk inside, to take in its beauty, and to be put in touch with the transcendent beauty of the worship and the music that we experience in that place. But in this article, John Pavlovitz says, the church has never had anything to do with geography. It was never a building but a, never a fixed physical location you visited for an hour on Sunday. That's far too small a space to fit the vast and sprawling life that it produces. The church has always been the people who gather together to do the work of compassion and mercy and love and justice, regardless of where and when they gather. They are living, breathing, animated sanctuaries who house divinity. If there is anything we might learn from our experience of exile during this COVID-19 pandemic, perhaps it is just that. It is we who are the living sanctuaries who house divinity. In a comment to that article made by Alison Brooks, reflecting on what Easter Day would be like this year for us, she said, we'll all be the women at the tomb, expecting to find the body of Christ in one place, but instead, that finding that it is among and within us already. Thank you, Allison, for that beautiful and insightful comment. Indeed, the body of Christ is among us and within us already. And I believe we're already finding new ways to live into this understanding, perhaps even some that will carry, carry us on into a new era of life after COVID-19. In the meantime, we'll do what Jesus' disciples have always done, go on to Galilee and hope that, yes, Jesus will show up there too. We'll keep on doing the work before us 
of making new disciples, baptizing, and going forth into the world to love and to serve. While it's a big disappointment not to be physically together around the table for Eucharist today, and I must say something I feel deeply on this, my last Easter with you as your rector, I come to this moment, and I hope you do too, with a sense of great hope and promise for who and what we can become through this time of great trial, this ordeal, if you will. Life will, yes, be different in some ways after we have come through it, and I pray better in some ways for what we will have learned, for the strength we will have discovered in ourselves and in others, for our tenacity and perseverance through the dark and difficult days, for the losses we will have experienced, whether of loved ones or jobs or our sense of security. We will be stronger. We will be better in ways that we do not yet know. Because it is in our weakness finally, that the power of God is made strong. So may this Easter day, different as it is, be a blessing to us. May we find new hope and new possibility in all of life's adventures and even in its darkest hours, just as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and those first disciples did on that very first Easter day. And now we're going to go on from here to the Easter day celebration at the Washington National Cathedral. Joining together with our fellow Episcopalians from over 17 different countries that make up the Episcopal Church, and where our presiding bishop, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, will be the preacher for our service today, beginning at 8.15 a.m. Pacific Time. And you can find the service at the address in the email that you received from Realm with this video message. And following that, beginning at 10 o'clock this morning, please join us for the first Trinity Parish virtual coffee hour on Zoom. You'll also find a link to it with login information in the email from Realm. And for those of you who didn't make it up by 8.15 this morning, you can either go to the recorded version of the service on the National Cathedral website or to the live stream service from our own St. Mark's Cathedral in Seattle, where the service will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. just after our virtual coffee hour on Zoom. So a very blessed and joyous Easter to you all. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.